Let's get started. Start with listening and then learn new words and practice them in sentences. Have you ever wondered how some people manage to argue so convincingly and confidently in debates? Well, the secret lies not only in their knowledge and passion, but also in their mastery of certain techniques that make their arguments persuasive and engaging. Welcome to this enlightening exploration of the art of debating. Our journey will take us through the fascinating world of structured arguments, effective counter arguments, and the power of vocabulary. We will delve into the craft of building strong opening statements, supporting your points with compelling evidence, and using signposting to guide your argument. We'll also explore how to handle opposing views without losing composure and strategies to refute arguments politely and logically. Along the way, we'll uncover useful phrases for agreeing, disagreeing, and making points, all while maintaining a formal tone. Embarking on this journey, you will learn to structure your arguments, counter opposing views, and employ the right vocabulary to make your points more persuasive. Starting with a bang, your opening statement can make or break your argument. Now let's dissect that statement. When you're structuring your argument, the opening statement is your first impression. It's your opportunity to capture the attention of your audience and set the stage for the points to follow. Think of it as the headline of a newspaper article. It needs to be catchy, concise, and give a glimpse into the story that's about to unfold. So how do you craft a strong opening statement? Firstly, make sure your statement clearly outlines your position. This isn't the time for ambiguity. Be assertive and confident in presenting your stance. Secondly, use your opening statement to hint at the compelling evidence you're about to present. This creates a sense of intrigue and sets the expectation that your argument is not just opinions, but fact-based. Now, speaking of evidence, let's move on to our next point, supporting your argument. Evidence is the backbone of your argument. It's what gives it credibility and substance. The evidence could be statistics, research findings, quotes from experts, or real-life examples. Remember, it's not about the quantity of evidence you provide, but the quality. Each piece of evidence should be relevant, accurate, and directly support your argument. Next up is signposting. This is your roadmap that guides your audience through your argument. Signposting involves using phrases such as, firstly, on the other hand, in conclusion, to denote the beginning, middle, or end of an argument. These phrases help to organize your thoughts, allowing your audience to follow along easily. They create a logical flow, making your argument easy to comprehend and more compelling. So, to wrap up, structuring your argument involves creating a captivating opening statement, substantiating your points with credible evidence, and using signposting to guide your audience through your argument. Each of these elements plays a crucial role in making your argument persuasive and impactful. Remember, a well-structured argument is the foundation of a persuasive debate. So take the time to plan and structure your argument effectively. Your audience and your debate score will thank you for it. Having a solid argument is great, but what happens when you're faced with a compelling counter-argument? This is where the true test of your debating skills comes into play. Counter-arguments are the arguments posed by your opposition, challenging your initial points. They can be potent weapons in the hands of your opponents, but fear not, for they can also be your golden opportunity. How you handle these counter-arguments can decide the outcome of the debate. The first step towards effectively dealing with counter-arguments is to stay composed. It's easy to lose your cool when your arguments are challenged, but remember, debates aren't about who can shout the loudest, they're about who can argue the most effectively. Keep your voice steady and your demeanor calm. This not only helps you think clearly, but also sends a message to your opponents and the audience that you're confident in your stance, even under fire. Next, listen carefully to the counter arguments presented. Understanding your opponent's perspective is crucial to formulating a strong response. You can't refute an argument without fully comprehending it first. Once you've understood the counter argument, it's time to respond. This is where your logical thinking comes into play. Break down the counter argument point by point and refute each one logically and politely. For instance, if your opponent claims that A leads to B and you disagree, don't just say you're wrong. Instead, provide evidence or reasoning to show why A doesn't necessarily lead to B. This is a much more effective and respectful way of challenging your opponent's argument. Remember, your goal isn't to belittle your opponent or their argument, but to prove that your argument stands stronger. 
The key here is to be respectful and persuasive, not aggressive or confrontational. And finally, always be prepared for a counter-counter argument. The debate doesn't end with your response to a counter-argument. Your opponent may well come back with further points, and you need to be ready to respond. Mastering counter-arguments allows you to turn the tide in your favor, even when under pressure. With practice and patience, you'll be able to handle any counter-argument thrown your way and come out on top in any debate. In debates, words are your weapons. Choosing the right ones can give you an edge over your opponents. In the heat of a debate, it's crucial to know how to express agreement or disagreement effectively. It's more than a simple yes or no. It's about articulating your thoughts in a way that can sway your audience. For instance, to agree you could say, I share the same viewpoint, or I can see where you're coming from. To disagree, consider phrases like, I see your point, but I beg to differ, or while I understand your perspective, I hold a different view. When making points, aim for clarity and conciseness. Phrases such as, to put it another way, in other words, or to draw a parallel, can help you present your ideas more effectively. Now let's talk about maintaining a formal tone during debates. Formal language requires precision, so avoid using slang or colloquial expressions. Stick to proper grammar rules and use complex sentences when necessary. Remember, the goal is to sound educated and professional, not stiff or robotic. For instance, instead of saying, I don't get it, opt for I fail to understand. Instead of, it's a no-brainer, say, it's self-evident. These small tweaks can significantly elevate your language and make you sound more authoritative. Lastly, we'll touch upon some common debate topics and vocabulary. Topics can range from social issues like gender equality and climate change to more abstract concepts like freedom of speech and moral relativism. It's essential to familiarize yourself with the vocabulary related to these topics. Words like sustainability, discrimination, liberty, and ethics often come up in such debates. By expanding your vocabulary and mastering these phrases, you'll be able to formulate more sophisticated arguments and counterarguments. It's not just about knowing the words, but also understanding when and how to use them effectively. With the right words at your disposal, you can make your arguments more compelling and persuasive. So, are you ready to conquer the world of debates? We've covered a lot of ground today exploring the art of persuasive argumentation, from crafting a solid opening statement, supporting your points with evidence, to using signposting to guide your argument. We dived into the world of effective counterarguments, learning how to respond to opposing views without losing composure and strategies for refuting arguments politely and logically. And let's not forget the importance of debate vocabulary and formal language. We've learned useful phrases for agreeing, disagreeing, and making points, and how to maintain a formal tone in debates. All these elements are crucial in mastering debates in English. But remember, the knowledge gained here is just the beginning. It's up to you to apply these techniques in your future debates. Don't shy away from challenging discussions, and remember to maintain that calm and confident demeanor under pressure. Remember, the key to mastering debates is practice, so don't be afraid to put these techniques to the test. Good luck! Let's learn new words and practice English at level C1. Rhetoric Rhetoric, the art of effective or persuasive speaking or writing. Example, mastering rhetoric is essential for crafting compelling arguments during debates. Rebuttal Rebuttal, a counter-argument or contradiction. Example, in debates, presenting a strong rebuttal can undermine your opponent's stance. Concession Concession, acknowledging an opposing point in an argument. Example, making a concession can show that you understand both sides, strengthening your overall argument. Appeal Appeal, a persuasive technique used to evoke emotion, logic, or ethics. Example, using an emotional appeal can be a powerful way to persuade the audience in a debate. Assertion Assertion, a confident and forceful statement of fact or belief. Example, a clear assertion of your main point is critical when opening a debate to establish your position.